Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brian Lindshield. I am the chair of the General Education System Wide Transfer Course OER Recommendation Committee that uh, Kay Bohr has been working through. So thank you for joining us today for our session focused on college algebra. And so I'm going to go through a little bit of uh, a background, very short, you know, about what we're doing and kind of provide some more context around this before I turn it over to uh, Tom and Julie to go through their, their expertise in college algebra and what they did. So the reason why this our committee has decided to do this is one of the most common barriers that is referenced as it comes to um, adopting or using OER is the time and difficulty in identifying it. And so those are common barriers. And so the idea here was to um, try to allow some people to do this uh, and then allow them to uh, put that out so that way it's available for others so they don't have to go through and replicate the same work. And so that's the real purpose of this. The, the mm. purpose is not a mandate, is not the focus of you have what to go we're to work. To. Yeah. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to make a mandate. We're trying to make a recommendation for uh, faculty members that are interested in using OER. And so that's what the purpose is here. So as far as the five courses we, we've done this for, so College Algebra, Composition One, Elementary Statistics, Introduction to Psychology, and then Public Speaking are the five that were chosen. And so those are chosen based off of enrollment and some other factors that we were considering to look at what sort of impact we could possibly see from those. And the, the funding that was used to um, lead to this work was from the Midwest Higher Education Compact, a pilot grant that they gave to our OER steering committee. And so we're very uh, indebted, you know what I mean, to them allowing us to support this work. So um, that is the end of what um, I wanted to share. And so I now want to turn it over to Tom and Julie. And I want to preface with my understanding is Julie's not feeling real well. And so Tom's going to mostly lead here, but um, Tom and Julie can introduce themselves a little bit and then talk more about the recommendations from their evaluation. Thank you, Brian. I am uh, Tom Mahoney. I'm an associate professor of mathematics at Emporia State University. Um, I'll let Julie introduce herself if she's feeling up for it. Otherwise, I can go into the presentation. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm not feeling great today. Um, my name is Julie Meshack. I am an assistant professor of math at Butler Community College. Um, and take it away, Tom. Thank you. So uh, I should share my screen. Which all right. I okay. Um I'll just jump into we looked at a lot of different resources because college algebra is certainly um a, a course that you see at all institutions and it's covered in a variety of ways, and it is one of the um entry level points for OER when it comes to mathematics. So we found as many of these resources as we possibly could. Uh, a number of these I've used in some capacity or another in the past uh, eight years. But for the purposes of what KBOR is wanting to do, a lot of them get eliminated pretty quickly because they are missing key components that are part of the outcomes listed for the, the college algebra that we teach. So the common things that are missing are things about exponential functions and logarithms, things missing about equations of circles or compositions of functions or discussing relations. And then the other big thing is missing anything about solving systems of linear equations with matrices. Um, I don't know what my audience looks like in terms of mathematical background, but just those are common things that uh, appear in the outcomes for this course. And a lot of these um, options are missing in those areas. So you can see that that leaves basically four options left. And two of them are open stacks. One of them is Stitz Zieger, and then the one at the bottom is a combination of the two. So we looked at those in a little bit more detail. And of these finalists, here are the, kind of the main differences between them. Uh, for Stitz Zieger, or I guess the first thing to look at is accessibility. Um, especially when it comes to mathematics, there are major issues with um, accessibility when it comes to PDFs. So if you have a PDF only option, you're not gonna get things like captioned images, you're going to run into issues with having screen readable mathematics equations, and those can be major barriers if uh, one of the primary concerns is accessibility. So one of the big advantages with OpenStax is that it has a web version. 
and the language that it uses in the web, all the mathematics equations that are typeset do have an option to turn them into a screen readable format. Also, a lot of the graphics in the book are captioned. Some of them are more detailed than others, but um, it's of the options that I reviewed, it's probably the most detailed captions that I've seen for uh, figures and images in the text. The other consideration, or one of the other considerations, is going to be the order in which the content is presented. Uh, and this is where I'm purely speaking from my opinion as someone who's taught college algebra a few times. I like that OpenStax starts with an a review of, the, of arithmetic. A lot of times I have students coming into college algebra and it's been a couple of years since they've taken a math course. So starting off with something like sets and relations, which is not covered uh, as extensively in most high school math courses, uh, might be a little bit of a jump. Also starting with functions and quadratics might be skipping over some review that might be helpful for some students. So that is another advantage of OpenStax. And then the last uh, is just looking at the, at the extras, uh, especially if we want to encourage uh, various teachers to be switching to uh, this OER college algebra option if they're used to using something like My Math Lab or WebAssign or something with an online homework component. Uh, OpenStax is good in that area in that it has web work exercises. I won't go too much into too much detail with web work. Just know that if you're familiar with online homework systems like WebAssign or My Math Lab or a number of others. WebWork is one that is free and open source. So for example, at Emporia State, uh, I talked to IT, they got a little server up and running. So all the cost is the, the clock cycles of that server to keep it going. We don't have to pay anything for that. And therefore students don't have to pay anything for that. And with OpenStax, you do have a repository of homework exercises ready to go. So instructors can go in, look at that collection of problems, and then insert the ones that they want to give out as online homework that gets graded automatically. Um, another advantage with OpenStax is it has a co-requisite support option. So on this previous slide, you'll notice that OpenStax appears twice. The second option just has a little bit of extra review stuff woven into the text. So it's the exact same textbook, but every couple of sections, there might be a little bit of extra background for students that are coming in. Maybe it's been a while since they've taken a math course, or maybe they just have a weaker background and need a little bit of extra help uh, with some of the review topics. And because OpenStax is just, uh, it's a juggernaut in the OER world, there are a lot of people that have video lectures on YouTube. You could just type in OpenStax College Algebra into YouTube and see full playlists explaining the different sections, uh, which is very useful both for both for instructors and for students. Uh, not to leave out the Zeger option and the combined option, talking a little bit about some of their extra, extras that are beneficial. The um, what is called the Salt Lake Community College. Their video lectures are like they produce them specifically for that textbook. So you do have that option. Uh, the combined option also has you can use the problems from the OpenStax because it's a combination of the two textbooks. And if you like the lecture slides for Stitzeger or the checkpoint quizzes or the video solutions available for that option, those also play to the oh, apply to the Salt Lake Community College option. So those are all the things that you know we looked at. Um, my final recommendation, you can probably guess from what I was talking about, I recommend the OpenStax College Algebra as the final recommendation. I can share this, uh, this slideshow so you can get these actual links, but also you just type that into Google, it'll be the top result. The optional co-requisite support is great for uh, classes that need a little bit more remediation. For example, at Emporia State, we have a three credit College Algebra in a 110. We also have a five credit hour College Algebra 111, which has extra review. So maybe for the review section, I'd recommend doing the co-requisite support because it has a little bit more review built into it. And then for the three credit version, just going with the regular College Algebra without the co-requisite support. And then I also have linked here the GitHub repository that has all of the web work exercises that are available if um, people want to have an online homework solution. So that's all that I have. Uh, if there's anything that Julie wants to add, go ahead. Or if there are any questions, go ahead. Um, I'll add. I'll add real quick um, that I do really like the OpenStax. That's totally what I would recommend. Um, I am interested in and in possibly um, maybe a discussion later on about kind of what Salt Lake did. Um, they eventually partnered with 
um, I think the University of Utah and like Weber State University, and they kind of did the Franken text thing to um, mesh all of these uh, resources together to, <clears throat> excuse me, to um, get something that was right for them. Um, so that's, that's also um, something that, you know, we could even consider um, some sort of joint thing where we m meld all of them together. But uh, that's kind of all I wanted to add. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom and Julie. So um, you can either unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, or you can use the chat as well that we're uh, monitoring as well. which I'll, I'll go ahead and make a comment, you know, while we're seeing if there's any questions that um, the the system has joined a platform known as LibreText. And so the Julie's comment there, it makes it easier if, if we do want to what's called remix, you know, resources together to uh, make it so that um, you can be able to uh, customize, you know, the resource in, in a way, if you like aspects from one, you know, and not the other and things so that you, you can do that. And so that's something that you do have an interest in or, you know, the overall group, you know, as far as a discipline or course, you know, has interest in that's something that could be assistance with, you know, I mean, the help to the, make that something that's available. And um, there is a um, assessment platform, you know, as well, that's associated with it, that associates web work, my open math, you know, those sorts of things as well, that if that that's an interest of, of where the overall group wants to go, that's something could be done or facilitated as well. But I looked, and it looks like the, they don't look, it doesn't look like LibreText has the most, um, it looks like maybe the most recent one's 2E. Is that right, Tom? Is that the most recent college algebra one? Is that the one you guys kind of like? Yes, 2E is an echo. Okay, second edition. Yes. So I see 1E, you know, and so we might have to have them um, update. You know what I mean? The resource they have available. And one of the things I like about using, for example, the web version, which I got pulled up here just to share. Sure. Um, pull that out. Okay, pull and share. One of the reasons I like the web version is that it this link will all well I guess no here is the uh, the link that does change I was gonna say this always updates but so even between the big versions if there's like a typo somewhere they'll fix that and then if you're on the website it will always just be up to date yeah so. are there questions comments concerns about their recommendation or using it, you know, in any way, since they do have some experience using it as well. If you're someone who maybe has not used, you know, these resources, they'd be people you could ask about, you know, what was it like to do this, that sort of thing. Hi, Brian. Uh, this is Leighton Hassan from Highland Community College, Highland. Sorry, I was a little bit sick today. But uh, this is a great recommendation, but also uh, have you ever considered uh, Looking at the library text, library text also open resource uh, of OER and material. Uh, I went there a couple of weeks ago, also recently, but I have found some very important contents over there as well. So, what was the name of it again? Library text. Libre text. Yep. Yeah, so that, that open. So when we looked at that big list of all the resources evaluated, anything that was listed in Libre text, we did look at. Yeah, so to, to be fair to them, we, we did give them a link. You know what I mean? And so it was one of the things that they, they were able to look at and evaluate and making the recommendation. Thank you for your well, question. Not really a question, more of a comment, I guess. Um, I'm adjunct, obviously, at Seward, but have year, for years used um, web work as well as OpenStax um, and huge fan of both, especially the the no cost to students, um, the ability there to update kind of what you want. Um, 
I have, I've used Pearson a lot as well, but one thing that I, I feel is an advantage there, especially with web work, is the ability to customize as much or as little as you want on a problem. Um, there is a great repository, as you mentioned there, but but there, there's the ability there to edit and update questions that we don't have necessarily readily available in Pearson there. Um, plus, um, I've used the uh, OpenStax CoREC model, the CoREC Resit textbook, um, and I, I agree, it does a lot for not only allowing students to get the, the material that they may be missing, but in particular that the new uh, version of that, I think it was two years ago that they produced the new one with the CoREC, it actually has at the beginning of every section of each section of each chapter, um, the link and the information that gets them back to the intermediate algebra textbook that it maps to, which I think is also very important there that that's open for students. They can immediately see the connection um, and also know where they need to go to get um, additional support there. I think the only concern with the web work, and, and, and I believe Tom mentioned this, would be the kind of setup and the maintenance there of a server. Um, other than that, uh, most of web work is pretty much plug and play. Yeah, you probably would want someone that maybe has a little bit of experience with the coding on the back end. Um, some of it's Java, some of it's Perl, depending on the version and how old the question is. But I think a lot of that um, can can be just taken from the repository or, or again, getting someone that maybe has some more experience there with, with writing the code for the problem to get it to do what you want it to do. But I think it's, it's a very good free option for students. Um, we've had very um, a lot of success with using it. And then uh, again, like I said, the the custom customizable feature there of web work is something that we don't necessarily get from other, you know, package type courses with with Pearson, or, you know, my math lab or, or sorry, my lab math now, um, or some of those other other platforms there. So I guess it was just the, I've been there, done that, it works. I, and I'm a huge fan of, of both OpenStax as well as the web work there. Thank you, Matthew, for that comment and for using it. I mean, and finding it being something that's effective for your students and sharing that with others. I just put the slides in the chat. So if anyone wants to check out the resources, um, you have the ability to do that. Yeah, and thanks to Claire for letting me know that that um, LibreText is working to import. You know, I mean the their rec their recommended book. You know, I mean as well. And so um, for those who aren't familiar, that that makes it there's limited changes you can make to on the OpenStax platform. You know, on the Libre text, if you go there, you could, to Matthew's point of trying to customize problems, if you want to customize sections, you know what I mean? Within the book, you can start to do that. You know what I mean as well? You don't have to. Uh, you could also brand it, you know what I mean, for your institution, you know, as well, if you're one of the ones that, you know, has joined, you know, the LibreNet and things, to so have it be, you know, here's the, um, Seward County, you know what I mean? College algebra book, you know what I mean? Or whatever you want to be, where it's not branded necessarily open stacks anymore, that you could have an ability to be able to um, make a copy of that and have it branded in that way. If you want to make changes, you can, but you don't necessarily have to. So I don't know, do you see, you see Claire's? Yep, I'm working on that. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I think it'll be past that by this point, but. Restricted. There we go. Got it. Thank you, Claire. Other questions or comments? Hey, if not, uh, I appreciate everyone for joining. I don't know that there's a reason to lengthen this. So the plan is that we will post a recording of this for others who can join live today. And so, or if you want to go back and look at something, you know, that, that Tom shared about the resource or other people like Matthew shared, you know, about it and things, you can go back and do that as well. And uh, we thank you for your interest in attending today and OER in general. And I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you.